In this video, we'll be talking about calcium and cell injury. This is a very important topic in pathology and we would try to understand that why calcium is important for the cell and why too much calcium is bad. That's the entire theme of this video. So stay tuned till the end. So it turns out that the cytosolic free calcium concentration is pretty low. And it is pretty low for an important reason. Let us try to get the overall concentration idea. So the extracellular calcium concentration is in order of millimoles. Just to get a ballpark estimate, 1.3 millimole. Whereas the intracellular cytosolic calcium concentration is 0.1 micromole. So you can see that several uh, order of difference exist between these two environments. But why the calcium level in the cytosol has to be checked and has to be regulated in a lower level? It turns out most of the calcium that is present in the cell is stored in a reservoir. And the reservoir is basically endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria. So let's see what really happens when you have too much of calcium. So ATP production is actually compromised. The mitochondria has a basically specific pore formation on the surface, which is known as mitochondrial permeability transition pore. That leaks out various stuff that dissipates the mitochondrial membrane potential. And we all know if the mitochondrial membrane potential is disrupted, the electron transport chain would be compromised. And that would lead to a problem in the ATP production. The ATP production would be dramatically decreased. And for any cell, ATP is really important, right? So ATP depletion is a form of injury. You can quickly watch at the video about ATP depletion and cell injury. Anyway, there are multiple things that can happen when we have too much of cytosolic calcium. So there would activation of many enzymes. Some of these are listed here. For example, there would be calcium dependent proteases phospholipase, endonuclease, ATPase that would be activated in the cytosol. And each of them has their own harmful effect. For example, protease might cleave the cytoskeletal uh, uh, elements and basically cause cytoskeleton damage. Phospholipase might cause membrane damage by cleaving the phospholipids in the membrane. Endonuclease can chop off the DNA or RNA and they can create problems. ATPase would deplete ATP. So overall, cellular aspect of uh, several cellular aspects are compromised when calcium level is too high. It also turns out when there is too high calcium, which possibly leaked out from mitochondria and other places, there could be caspase inactivation, either in a direct fashion or an indirect fashion when cytochrome C is leaked out and APOF1 is activated. So moral of the story, ultimately calcium overload could cause apoptosis. Now these kind of calcium overload is very important in context of highly electrically and metabolically active cells like neuron. So when there is too much glutamate, there is too much of calcium influx through the glutamate receptors. That lead to problem, that lead to a problem known as excitotoxicity, too much excitability in the brain often might lead to seizures and there could be death of the neurons associated with it. That's why it's important in retrospect to keep the calcium level in check. When there is too much of calcium level, it is also found that the ROS level increase and that this reactive oxygen species can cause lipid peroxidation, cause damage to protein, it can cause also damage to DNA. So at a holistic level, there are several levels of damage that can be occurring when the calcium level is high. So question is, what keeps the calcium level low? It turns out there are several buffering molecules in the cytosol which acts like calcium sponges or calcium buffers, which, which, which work in a negative fashion to make sure the cytosol always has low level of calciums. Anyway, calcium is responsible for many biological functions, for example, muscle contraction, secretion, metabolism, fertilization, neuronal activity, cell division, phagocytosis, cell motility. So that is why from an entire physiological perspective, calcium is damn important. Yet, that so important molecule, if present in too much amount, can cause equal damages to the cell, right? That's why the entire video gives you the message that a precise tuned level of calcium is really important and too much of calcium is actually pathological to the cell. I hope this video makes sense. Um, this video gives the main message, which is tight regulation of calcium is important. I hope 
you enjoyed this video see you in next video then